Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This is James. Today we're going to talk about A-Level Physics Chapter 20, Ideal Gases. And this is the chapter outline. The general big idea of the chapter is that we're going to study gas particles in depth and what are the factors that affect their physical properties. Just an introduction to gas particles. They move randomly and their motion is constant. And their motion is constant, rapid and random due to collision. But how do we know that gas move like that? It's due to Robert Brown's experiment. In 1827, he observed pollen grain under a microscope and he realized that these pollen grains move in a random jittery motion. Later, he figured out that they move because they're hit by the particles. And this movement is called Brownian motion. And it doesn't just apply to the pollen grain. Later, people realized that it also applies to the gas particles. All right, look at this smoke image here. You can see that the smoke particle move in a zigzag pattern. And if you were to use a microscope and zoom in, you will find out that these smoke particles move in such order because they are collided by the air particles. So Brownian motion explain how these air particles move. So air particles move at a very fast speed at around 500 meters per second. However, they don't travel far in a straight line before colliding with another molecule. And after each collision, either with the wall or another particle, they change direction. The more energy they have, the faster they move, and which means higher temperature. So I have this diagram here. If you were to heat up the gas particle, they move very rapidly. That increases the temperature of the gas. And as for all of us, we are actually being bombarded by these air particles all the time. And it's called atmospheric pressure. And the atmosphere exerts pressure on everything due to the weight of the air. And you might ask, why don't we as humans collapse? And that is because, fortunately, we also have air inside our body that presses outward, balancing the pressure. So to experience this further, next time you, when you fly in an airplane, you will have ear discomfort. It happens because external pressure changes while internal pressure stays the same. Because when you're on a higher altitude, your pressure will be lower. But then inside of you, the pressure stays the same. Because of that, you feel the ear discomfort. So now I want you to picture that these gas particles, they are in the box and they're constantly moving and colliding. As they collide with the wall, they exert pressure on the wall. Because if you look at the formula for pressure, it's force over error. And if molecules move faster, they hit more frequently, and as a result, higher pressure. In other words, the faster they move in this box, the more pressure they'll be exerting on the box. And if you want to dig further down, why is there a force when they collide with the wall? Because when they are moving, they have momentum. And when they collide with the wall, there is a change in momentum over a period of time. And because of that, we have force. Change in momentum divided by time is equal to force. So we have learned previously that the faster they move, the more pressure they exert. And because of that, when temperature increase, pressure also increase. Because when it's high temperature, it causes the molecule to move faster. Hence, more collision result in more pressure. That's why when you put a balloon under the sun, because of the high temperature, particles move very fast. They expand until they burst. So another factor is volume. So imagine I have this gas particle here, the piston, if I were to press down, you can see that gas particles has less area to move. And because of that, collision will happen more frequently, and as a result, more force, and ultimately more pressure exerted. So these two factors, temperature and volume, they are related to laws that we'll be learning in a while called the Charles Law and Boyce Law. Before we go into Boyce Law and Charles Law, let's look into some properties of a gas so that we can understand how this law affects these properties. First is pressure, we already talked about it. Force exerted by gas particle when they collide with the wall of the container. Temperature, what is the average kinetic energy of these gas particles? And volume, the space that the gas occupies. And the fourth quantity is mass, which is the amount of gas present, which is often measured in moles instead of grams. So one mole is equivalent to 6.022 times this amount of particle. It is known as the Avogadro constant. And the mass of one mole of its molar mass. So for example, one mole of oxygen, which is this amount of oxygen particles, is equivalent to 32 gram. And for different elements, they will have different molar mass. So more, what you need to know is that there are more gas particles. And as a result, they will exert higher pressure on a specified volume. Now, just in case you forget about this in chemistry, I'm helping you to revise. There's a relationship between number of moles, mass, and molar mass. Number of moles is equivalent to the mass of the gas divided by what's the molar mass of the gas. So you can see that gas is measured in gram. Molar mass is gram per mole. 
So if you want to know the number of moles, you can just use mass divided by molar mass. So a work example, if you have 0 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide and the molar mass is 44 gram, how much mass do you have? So you can apply the equation, substitute the value 0 0.4, 0 0.5 multiplied by 44, that's 22 gram. Now, without further ado, let's go into the laws. First, Boyle's law. It states that for a fixed amount of gas, the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to its volume, meaning volume increase, pressure decrease, pressure increase, volume decrease. And this is the equation. We usually use the third equation when we want to solve a question. The key idea is that as volume decreases, gas particles collide more frequently, increasing pressure. And when volume increases, let's say I pull out the piston, collision decrease lead to lower pressure, which is pretty straightforward. And this is the pressure volume. You can see that the higher the volume, the lower the pressure, the lower the volume, the higher the pressure. And the product P times V will always be the same. And that's why we have the equation PV equal to constant. And the, remember that the curve is a downward sloping hyper. It is an inverse relationship that is not linear. And there's another graph for Boyle's law. Instead of using volume in the x axis, it's one over volume. That's when you have a straight line graph. Now let's solve a work example. So this gas has this amount of pressure and volume. The volume is decreased. Now they have less space, collision more likely to happen, so higher pressure. So, but we can calculate the exact amount of pressure using the formula here. Just substitute all the value inside and you have gotten 400 kilopascal. You can see the pressure double when the volume is half. All right, the next law is the Charles law. It states that the volume of the gas is directly proportional to its temperature given that the gas is at constant pressure. The higher the temperature, the higher the volume. So as explained by this equation, when temperature increases, gas particles move quicker, increasing collision with the container wall cause it to expand. And when temperature goes down, collision happens less frequently, therefore the volume contracts. So you can see that collision of gas particles is a key idea that you need to adopt if you want to understand Boyle's law and Charles law better. So this is the Charles law graph, the higher the temperature in Kelvin, the higher the volume. So when we are learning Boyle's law and Charles law, we have those beautiful graphs, and that is when we assume that those gas are ideal in that they perfectly follow Boyce and Charles law and the next equation that we'll be learning in a while. And we assume that there's no attractive or repulsive force between molecules and they still follow ideal gas law. But then we have to understand that real gas, they deviate at high pressure and low temperature, meaning there are other factors that affect these physical quantities. So molecules might also attract and repel each other, affecting behavior and they deviate significantly as molecular volume and attraction becomes important. So that's just a differentiation between what ideal gas and real gas is. So if we look at Charles law, the ideal gas will move just like a straight line, but the real gas will probably deviate due to the intermolecule attraction. So now you have known the difference between ideal gas and real gas. Just remember that the following lecture, we are based on the ideal gas scenario, okay? And Let's try to use Boyle's law and Charles law to form this equation. So recap of Boyle's law and Charles law. So for Boyle's law, it states that when temperature is constant and there's a fixed mass, pressure and volume, they are inversely proportional to each other. And Charles law assumed that the pressure is constant, mass is constant, and the volume increases with temperature. So now we can combine these two equations. We can generalize as PV is directly proportional to temperature because temperature here is directly proportional to volume and pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And after that, we can introduce the number of moles of gas. At this point, we can just multiply by T. And in order to remove the proportionality, we introduce another constant called R, the universal gas constant, which has a constant value here. And then we remove the proportionality. And that's when we have PV equal to NRT. And this is what we call the equation of state we have two equations of state. We'll talk about this in a while. But for now, just know that the N is the number of molecules and the Boltzmann constant is also something we'll cover in a while. So using this ideal gas equation, we can start solving some question. A 2.5 mole of gas is at a temperature of 300 volume. Calculate the pressure. So we can use this equation, substitute all the values that we know, and we will have gotten the pressure of the gas. So all the laws that we have learned and the equations that we have learned so far, they describe how gases behave, the different quantities, how they change, but they don't explain why they behave that way. So kinetic theory of gases provide a microscopic explanation using Newtonian mechanics. So it connects the motion of gas molecule to macroscopic properties like pressure, temperature, and volume. So to summarize, 
The kinetic theory bridges the gap between what we observe and what is happening at the particle level. And as of now, I'm going to show you one equation that we'll need to know how to derive. How pressure is equal to one third multiplied by the density and the average square speed. So the arrow here represents square speed. So to help you derive this formula that eventually show that pressure is depending on these quantities here. First, just assume that there's a particles in this box moving, colliding, and it has a mass. And the speed is represented by the character C. By the way, this is not the speed of light, it's just how fast it moves. And L is the side length, okay? It's a square box and it's a cube. So first, once the particle collided with the wall, we can calculate the change in momentum. The initial momentum is MC. The final momentum is negative MC. So I'm using negative MC minus MC. So we have negative 2MC as the change in momentum, okay? And after that, I'm going to work out how much time it takes. So the distance that it will travel is from here, collide, and come back again. So we assume that the distance is 2L and the speed is C. With that, we can find out the time. And with that, change in momentum and time, we can figure out the amount of force that the particle exited on the wall. So I just combined the two equations together, 2MC divided by 2L over C, which will give me this quantity. And then using the force with the area, which is L square, I can figure out the pressure. So you can see step by step, pressure equal to force over area, Use this, divide by this, you'll get this. So that's the pressure. And step six, since particle move randomly in three dimension, one, two, three, the total mean square speed C square is distributed equally among the X, Y, Z direction. That's why we'll add one over three here to the equation because the average square speed in any one direction is one third of C square. And we also add another quantity called N here to represent the number of particles because in the beginning, we only assume one particle, okay? So I'm just gonna convert the side length cubic into volume, we are getting closer. And we can convert nm into m because it's just the number of particles multiplied by the mass. So we, we have the total mass. Lastly, we'll convert mass over volume into density. And that's when we have pressure equal to one over three density multiplied by the square speed. So the conclusion is that the pressure of a gas depends only on its density and the mean square speed on its molecule, which align with what we learned previously. But we are studying it from a particle perspective. So another thing that you will need to prove is temperature is affected by the average kinetic energy of the particle. We know that's the truth, but how do you prove it using the equation? And let's do it. That's the equation that we just derived. I didn't derive it to the most simplified form because it's required later this volume, but it's the same as the equation here, okay? Now, two equations that we have. We're gonna substitute P into this equation, so which will give us all this thing, and we can cancel out the V here, which will result in the equation here, and move one over three and N to the other side. We know that N over N is the Avogadro constant, which is the number of particles in one mole. So we can just reverse this and put down the Avogadro constant at the bottom, okay? So we also add one over two to make this formula look like the kinetic energy formula to both sides. After that, I'll just change this equation to make it neater. That's because we know that R over N is what we call the Boltzmann constant, a fundamental constant that relates the average kinetic of particles in a gas to the temperature. So this is the amount of energy that the particle has per Kelvin. So I will just substitute K into here. That's when you can see that half M C square, which is the kinetic energy, because C here is, this, is equal to three over two KT. And K is constant. And because K is constant, this equation shows that the temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy. So the higher this is, the t higher the T will be. And with that, we have proven using equation that temperature is affected by the average kinetic energy of the particle. When studying gas particles, you also need to know what translational kinetic energy is. It's the energy due to the motion of a particle in a straight line, okay? If the molecule just spin and tumble around, they are said to have rotational energy instead. In a gas, molecule move in random direction with different speed. So the key point here is that only translational motion contributes to temperature in an ideal gas. And if you add a word called mean, that's the average kinetic energy given by, possessed by one particle. So the Boltzmann constant is a fundamental constant that connects the microscopic molecular motion to the macroscopic temperature. So it shows that temperature is a measure of molecular motion because previously no one knows that average kinetic energy is related to the temperature. And he shows that. And the value of K here is this amount. That's the increase in kinetic energy of a molecule 
per Kelvin increase in temperature. So another quantity that you need to know is the root mean square speed. So the mean speed of molecule, which is the average speed of the particle, is not the same as the root mean square speed. RMS is used more often because it accounts for directional variation. It is directly related to kinetic energy and particle. So let me just show you the difference between mean speed and root mean square speed. So this is the different particles, they have different speed, and the mean speed is 3 meter per second, you just add them out and divide. Whereas the root mean square, you have to square them up, divided by 3, and square root them. And that will give you this amount. RMS speed is more useful for kinetic energy calculation. Just want to show you the difference between the two here. Using the equation that we derived just now, you will see that doubling the temperature doesn't double speed. In fact, it only increased by square root of 2, which is proven by this equation here. So that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.